And we're live, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's edition of NetReady's Facebook Live events. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for dedicating your time to me. I'm Stuart Coldown, VP for International Sales and Marketing here at NetReady. I've got my favorite guest here today, once again, Mr. Richard Sletcher. Hey, good to be here. Are you good? Yeah. Lovely stuff. Groundhog Day. I, I know. Like we just left the place cool. and we're back cool. again. <laughs> and week on week on week, it's just content that we're putting out here. Yeah. Now, I think this is round about our 30th episode. I think we're on 30 episodes this that one. That's a fact. Wow. How crazy. That's insane. And do you know what that tells me, Richard? No. Is this is a complex, exciting, but a complex industry. There are th- so many things to get through. You make me go goosey. You're right. 30, 30 hours. 30 hours. That's crazy. Just speaking about, and we're not even close to being done. But what this does is it brings me to the realization that because there are so many different moving parts to these businesses and this industry, that there is a lot to know. And what I want to do, and this is a nice segue into what we want to discuss now, is the various pain points. The pain points within MLM so that we can educate and notify people getting to this space of the pain points that exist. And there are a lot of them. This is a complex industry. And we're not trying to scare people off. We're not trying to say, there are so many things, don't do it. What we are trying to say here is, don't be oblivious. Understand what the road road uh, head uh, is, has in store for you. By understanding, we can move forward in the right way. Now, how did we get to understand this? <laughs> we did it. Well, not only that, we went onto the board. Yes, with these pain points. Yeah. We sat back as a management team. We we looked at this this beautiful glass whiteboard <laughs> that, that we've got up in our boardroom, and we just listed pain point after pain point. Yeah. And we went, whew, this is tough. Well, it's, I mean, when you, I mean, you were doing the listing, so you listed out all of the different touch points, let's call it, let's not call them pain points, Mm. but touch points that a person who's running an MLM business has to master. Mm. And you filled that whole board up and we were only halfway through the touch points. And at the time, you know, I've run these businesses. So for me, all of those things were just knowledge. They weren't, they weren't things to learn. They're just knowledge, you know, okay, I, I knew how to do all of that stuff. Mm. I've learned it by doing it. But the issue is when you have a look at it and say to yourself, well, somebody coming into this business has to know all of that. And that's just half of it. Then you realize, wow, mm. uh, there's a mountain to climb. There. Yeah. You know, you're not trying to put people off and that's fantastic, but there's a mountain to climb. Yeah. You know, and that, I, I mean, you blew me away when you did that. I, it, I must be honest with you. It, it was wild. To see it up there, to physically see it up there and go, wow, this is, there's a lot of information. There are a lot of words here. I was tired of writing. And you and Kirsten, your whole idea with that was we need to put training courses together for each part of this process. And I think that's something that we still need to do. Mm. But when you have a look at that and realize just how many touch points there are and how many training um, videos we would have to do, it was quite overwhelming. Mm. And again, we're not trying to scare people off. We're just trying to educate so that we can understand. Now, let's let's dive into this a little bit. Be afraid. Be very afraid. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's let's dive into this. So, what does it mean to run a multi-level marketing business? Because there's two big components here. Yeah. So, well, first of all, you've got a business, and what a lot of people there's there's two sort of groups of people that come to us. The one group of people know how to run a business, never run a team. Mm -hmm. The other group of people have been in a team, never run a business. Mm -hmm. So we do have those two. There's obviously those guys who've done both, and that's great because we drop the hammer on them. They go out there, um, Umgelela being an example. They Mm. know how to do it. Mm. They know how to run a business. They go out there and they crush it. Um, But a lot of people come to us and they split into those two camps. Now, the guys who run a business think, ah, Building this team is going to be simple. Mm. And the guys who are building teams think, oh, how hard can it be to run a business? Okay. Exactly. Both of them are wrong Mm. because running a business is extremely difficult. A large percentage of of, of startups fail. A large percentage of startup companies in any industry. I'm not talking about the multi-level industry. Any industry. Very few people go out there, start a business and make a success of it. 
it's it's quite a high percentage of failure in that space so there's skills to running a business and if you think about running a business and we're going to go into them but there's mm. everything from procurement mm. to your finances to mm. your support teams to your, your receptionist to your warehousing to your fulfillment to hr to hr to finance yeah. i mean and, and what i'm talking about is, is scale finance yeah there's there's a whole lot of things that go on in traditional business mm. now that is a full time if you're a ceo of a traditional business or the general manager or whatever you want to be called of a traditional business you got your hands full mm. that is a probably if you want to be successful it's a 10 hour job every day you're putting probably 10 mm. 12 hours into start up and run a successful business now on the other front you've got the network now the problem is the guys who own the business they come they sit down take out their pencil mm. 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 5 million 764 let's buy a porsche that is the let's buy a porsche calculation <laughs> yes and their thinking is how hard can this be i find two people who find two people who find two people yeah sounds simple doesn't mm. it but the problem is that these people they're an army of volunteers you've got no leverage over them nothing you're not paying them a salary mm. you can't tell them what to do you have to encourage them to do the stuff that you want them to do. Sure. So there's an entire full-time, huge full-time job building and driving the network. Yes. Because of it's, it's, a, it's a people business. It's mm. a belly-to-belly -belly business. Mm. I need to connect with you, really connect with you, because I won't get loyalty mm. if there's no connection. Sure. And then I need to train you. I need to teach you how to do the business. Mm. And if I don't teach you how to do the business, you won't do it because mm. it's not that the people in the network are not willing sure. they're extremely willing mm, yeah they just need to know what to do and they need to be encouraged and motivated and helped to do it so i've got to train you yeah. show you what to do mm -hmm. then i've got to encourage you to do it i've mm. got to motivate you to do it i've got to help you do it mm. can you see how this and is a then recognize job? me for doing it and when you do it i got to recognize the hell out of you make exactly. sure that if you sign up somebody i'm all over it yeah I tell the guy you signed up what an amazing dude you are. I tell you what amazing dude you are. I congratulate you for signing up that guy. I say to you, how can I help you train this guy? I'm involved with that process. Because down the line, you're going to do that with your people. I'm, I'm sort of perpetuating the thinking. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole incentive strategy. How do I incentivize you and get your competitive juices flowing so mm. that you compete with other people mm. in the space to actually up your game. Mm. And then lastly, there's an entire deal around social. Mm. Now, if you have a look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the pinnacle of existence is altruism. It's mm. self-actualization. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what you want to do is you want to pull people into, a, into a, an environment where they love being part of it where they love connecting with the other people around them mm. and where they feel like they're part of something and com contributing to something greater than themselves. Sure. So there's a whole social outreach. There's a whole social interaction. There's, there's an entire process around getting people together and getting them to, to connect with each other and feel part of something. Mm. Now that's massive, massive. Mm. It's a full-time job. Yeah. I reckon it's probably an eight to 10 hours a day job. Yes. So now, how do you fit 20 hours into a day? Well, that's the thing. I, I mean, in the last, uh, um, the last Episode. Facebook live we, live we did, we talked about my journey. Yeah. And when I started Acorn Kids, I was putting in 16 hours a day. Why? Because I was putting eight hours into running the business and I was putting another eight hours into building the, the team. So I was getting to work really early, working my guts out and then making sure I was connecting with the team and driving the team. That's how we built the business. Mm. And so when people come into this network, they think, ah, the team, what I'll do, send out a couple of emails and send out a WhatsApp message and mm. have a meeting at the, the local hotel yeah. and everything's going to go wild. Yeah. Well, that doesn't happen. Yeah. You have to connect with those people. You have to build a relationship with them. They've got to love you, trust you, care about you, and then they will have loyalty to you. And once that loyalty is in place, they will start building the business mm -hmm. for you. Mm. You don't put that in place, you're gone. So when you get into the multi-level marketing industry, either you have to have more than one person 
and divide your attention. So the bigger companies, the companies with the budgets, they hire key people in these places. Mm. So they'll hire somebody in the in the social space to create that cohesion, the social cohesion and the social outreach and all of that. They'll hire people to run the incentives. They'll hire people to do the recognition and manage the events and all of that. They'll hire people to do the training of the team and to go out to the people and to train the leadership and all of that kind of stuff. And they'll have a little army of people doing that. Mm. In their business, mm. they'll hire people to do the financing. They'll sure. hire people yeah. to do procurement and to run the warehouses and to run the support teams and mm. to run the the reception area and to clean the, the offices. Mm. But when you're a one-man band, like I was when Hike and I started Acorn, Acorn Kids, yeah. there was me and her and that was it. As a matter of fact, funny story, we go to your father's yes. uh, um, wimpy. wimpy and the first time we arrive there, this lady called Sarah comes up. She's the waitress there. We, she says to us, what do you want? And we've got like a really complex order. So we ask her for coffee with two cups and a pot of water because we've done <laughs> our coffee. And we want this with that and three mushrooms and two spinach leaves and a Brussels sprout because, of course, we're vegan. Yeah. And Heike wanted some crazy stuff. And so we had this really complex order. Um, and she goes away, gets it perfectly right first time. The following day. We go there again. About a week later, we go in there again. And Sarah comes up to us and says, are you having the same again? I said, no wow. flipping ways. Wow. And so see we trained them well. So <laughs> anyway, so Sarah goes away. I said, yes, we want the same. I thought, well, let's see what we get. Yeah. True. Bob, Sarah brings us perfect, perfect, everything exactly right. I said to Sarah, listen, we're looking for somebody to come and work for us. <laughs> You know, we missed Sarah. Uh, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> so I must just say that was before we knew you. Yes, I know. No. <laughs> so, so we employed Sarah and she worked for us for an entire period, right from day one, right the way through in, 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 in Aiken. Mm. Yeah, in Aiken kids. But anyway, yes. that's just a side, note, side yeah. note here. But the bottom line is that it's a complex business. Now, if there's just two of you, you just have to work longer hours. You have to put in 16, 18 hours a day, you know. Mm. And... It's just like that. So you've either got lots of money and no time. Mm. You hire people. Right. Or you've got lots of time and no money, mm. in which case you graft your guts out. Mm. But when you come into this, the number one pain point, and we're talking about pain points today. Yeah. The number one pain point is you better be prepared to work your guts out. If you want to succeed at this thing, there's no succeeding by sending mm. out a WhatsApp and an email. There's no shortcuts. You no shortcuts. You want to build a team, you better be connected with them. Otherwise, mm. they're gone. Mm. Understand, they don't have to be there. You're not paying them. If they don't like you, they don't feel loved. If they don't feel cared for, if they don't feel that this is worth being part of it, they don't come and complain. Mm. They don't ask you for a raise. Mm. They just leave. Yeah. They're gone. And then you look at your, your network and you see all of these dead nodes. There's only one reason there's so many dead nodes is that because you didn't care. Mm. If you didn't care enough, that's what happens. Sure. So... So that for me is one of the big pain points that mm. most of the companies, when they get into the space, don't realize. They think this is easy. Mm. Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty. Let's buy a Porsche. Mm. It's not like that at all. Sure. Well, that's the intention of this. We want to address all these these pain points so that there isn't there's no oblivious feeling towards you know your operations within this industry. So I think that then let's go into the next one. And I know it's not something that we have, but it's something that has come up um, just while you've been speaking is, is that of the product. So I've got a product, this product that I think is beautiful, that I know will sell well within this market. It's going to be consumed very nicely. And I have a network. I'm a very, I have strong networks and I connect with people very nicely. However, they, we're going to get into the complexities. But let's look at that product uh, and the pain points that surround that. We talk about pricing and the factor margin. We talk about um, the scalability, which is actually something I want to get towards at the end. Um, but the orders, back orders, do we do back orders on? So there's a whole bunch of things that I kind of want to get into, um, in, yeah. into the, just the product itself. Yeah, okay. So your product, I mean, that's a huge thing. So first of all, You've got to love your product. You've got to believe in your product. You've got to think it's the best product on the planet. Because mm. if you don't, you know, what are you doing? You're conning people. So, mm. you know, sure. if you don't believe, then you can't make other people believe. And they'll pick it up quickly if you don't believe. So the first thing is I agree with you. You've got to believe in the product. Yeah. But then 
what I find is that a lot of people who are network people, who are people people, feel guilty about making a profit. Yes. And they feel guilty about making a profit because what they're looking at it, they're looking at it from the lens of the networker. Mm. They're not looking at it from the lens of the business owner. Sure. <clears throat> now, what I try to say to them is, look, if you don't make a profit as a company, you're going to go bankrupt. And how does that help you people? Mm. It doesn't help them at all. Mm. If you're making a fortune, you can choose what you do with your money. Mm. You can have additional incentives. You can show the guys the love financially when you're earning loads of money. But until that point of time, you need to make a profit. Otherwise, the business is going to fold. Mm. You need to employ people. You need to run your business professionally. You need to have offices and tables and desks and chairs and internet connections and all sorts of stuff. So when we set the prices of the product, we say to our clients, look, it's a 6x markup. Yes. So if the products cost you one rand on the shelf or mm. one dollar on the shelf, mm. you sell it for six dollars. Yes. Minimum. Yes. If you can't get a, a six dollar margin, then that's not the right product. Mm. Now, remember, you've got a, a real advantage. You're not in retail space. A lot of people come out of retail space and they concentrate on the fact that in retail, you've got a buyer screwing you for margin like there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. In our space, you control the value chain and you've got the ability to build value in your product with the presentation. Mm. You can get your members to believe in the product. You can teach your members how to build value and therefore you can get a premium for your product, which is mm. what you want. Sure. Everybody should be making a fair mm. shake on this thing. Mm. In retail, it's not only the buyers <coughs> that are screwing you and driving you down what, what, what is it? It's a, it's a race to the bottom mm. in terms of the margins. That's the one well, you've thing. got all of the people who are competing in your space. Well, exactly. So now with within MLM, you're just discussing your product. But within retail, there's two, three, four, five, six other products. As you're walking down the aisle. Bing, 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 bing. And you're going to choose on price. Yeah. What is cheapest? You choose on price or you choose the company that has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising. Sure. Yeah. So it's a familiar brand. So the, the brand awareness mm. is one of the big deciding points. But even then, the guy can't push his price up too much. Mm. He can be 20% or 10% more expensive than everybody else on the shelf. But he can't be 50 or 100% more. Sure. Because people will just buy the... So there, you, as you said, it's a race to the bottom. Yeah. Here, you're building value. So, so again, you know, one of the big pain points is we find is what I find is trying to convince people that they need to make a reasonable profit on their product. Mm. And so I say to them, look, work out what your actual cost is. Don't fudge it. Don't add in courier fees and mm. stuff that doesn't actually exist. Mm -hmm. Work out what does that product cost you to land on your shelf? How much did it cost you to put this item on your shelf? Once you know that, take that price, times it by a minimum of six. If you can times it by 10, that's utopia. And that gives you the price you should be selling it at. Now, go out and work out how to justify that price. Mm -hmm. What is your brand story? Yes, exactly. How do you sell that product? Exactly. What's in and we've done a benefits. whole thing about pricing your product and that. And I would go back and look at that if anybody's kind of yeah. um, thinking about that. Sure. Okay. What, what this leads us into is you, you mentioned product and shelf. So let's talk about it on the shelf in our warehouse. So warehousing is another whole department in itself and you're not an expert in warehousing and warehouse management and the fulfillment of that warehouse this is a difficult space to plan so yeah. seeking expert advice or just getting better education on what actually goes into that is a very big part of yeah. of your mlm business so that's a big pain point okay so an entrepreneur comes along they know how to build a team they know how to run a business and this thing gets up and going and because of the nature of mlm it scales fast mm. now you've got to fulfill in the orders now i'm busy doing right now for our dream team project i'm mm. busy setting up a warehouse mm. and i'm doing all of the projections and how many staff members we need mm. it is massive it's huge you've got to have a warehouse you've got to have it racked up you've got to have your touch you've got to have your trolleys for picking and packing you've got to have your warehouse management software you've got to set that warehouse management software up You've got to have people to put, um, mm, the, put the products in. into the, the system. Mm. And then you've got to have a picker and a packer that picks it, packs it. You've got to have your agreements with all of your um, courier companies who are going to then fulfill the last mile mm. um, for you. Yeah. All of that stuff, that is a business all on its own. You know, there's companies, they do nothing else. They yes. just run warehousing and logistics. And that's tough enough. 
and it's a massive business. You've got to manage the HR. You've got to have a, a warehouse management on the floor. There's accounts that go along with that because mm. you're paying people. So, so, so health and safety elements. Health you know, and safety. There's yeah. machinery. There's big machinery like forklifts. There's shrinkage. Yeah, and exactly. There's so there's, there's a lot that's going to go into this. And, I mean, you're just listing high-level points on this. But I hope that people that are listening right now are going, wow, this is a this in itself as one pain point is is very complex. Yeah. So we we doing our uh, our calculations on we think that our uh, um, dream team project uh, will help our clients to get to um, between eighty and a hundred thousand agents over a twelve month period. Sure. And that results in having to have thirty picking and packing staff having 19 support staff. Mm. We'll talk about support in a minute. Mm -hmm. But suddenly you, you're looking at 40, 50 staff members to run that volume of work. Yeah. So literally, I mean, there's an entire... And, and the problem is it's not happening like it doesn't take you three or four years to build up to that. You can literally escalate up to that within nine, ten months. I mean, if you have a look at Umgalelo, mm. they went to 80,000 members in eight, 11, 11 months. 11 months, 11 months. yeah. 80,000 members. And I mean, the sales obviously tracked against that 80,000 yes. members. So now they've got an army of people picking and packing and, and putting products into the, into the boxes and shipping them out. And so that is something that you've got to be aware of. So one of the huge pain points, huge pain points is warehousing and fulfillment. Mm. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, you, you need to get somebody in who does know how to do mm. it. Mm. Or you need to do the research. Now, remember, you're working eight hours on the business working eight hours with the network now you need to put eight hours into your warehouse mm. when do we sleep no 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 sleeping do you sleep, sleep when you do no, don't do that okay <laughs> <laughs> you're getting the point here though yes it's, it's a huge challenge mm. and the thing is that you've got to start putting those things in place preemptively when you're doing ten thousand units a month ten thousand orders a month you can't put it in place then it's mm. too late mm. the horse is bolted you know and I've been into clients of ours where literally they've got people sitting on the floor packing products because they just can't keep and they're working day and night yeah. to try and keep up with the order process and everything is chaos. And of course the shrinkage is huge because the staff sitting there haven't been properly vetted. Yeah. And it's one for me, one for you. And one so for me. Oh. who was it? Were you telling me about somebody was telling me about their warehouse? Their friend phoned him up and said, you know, I see you've got a lot of competition in the market. And he said, really? So he goes along to the website and there's all of this product identical to his being sold. Turns out his warehouse manager is scavenging product, yeah. sticking it into, onto his own e-commerce site and selling it yeah. online. <laughs> this own stock, yes, yeah, true as pop. So the bottom line is that that's just part of that pain yes. point. So the point that I'm trying to make is warehousing. Is a massive pain point that needs to be dealt with yeah okay um it, it, i think it was the it was the one for you two for me principle <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right <laughs> called shrinkage <laughs> <laughs> called shrink. they call it i mean it's got a this beautiful name yes shrinkage. <laughs> what it refers to is they steal you blind oh, if you're not watching carefully yes so there's a lot of management that needs to go uh, the other thing is this is a big expense there's a capital outlay to putting a warehouse together yeah you know all of those elements you mentioned in my mind i'm just st stacking up the expenses and the value of of just setting up well after 12 months i mean your your setup costs we are we are calculating to be between two and three hundred thousand rands to set up a, it's a big small expense. warehouse and then your running costs just at eighty thousand members your running costs are about a half a million rand a month so so it actually it, it racks up quickly yeah but by that time eighty thousand people your business is scaled so money is coming in however money needs to be going back into product and bringing that in manufacturing and producing yeah. rather than the warehouse and unfortunately warehouse is a huge component yeah. of the business yeah. so it needs to be managed yeah, exactly right let's talk about uh, the documentation that we need, the business setup so we set up our warehouse everything's up and running and everything's going there but let's look at the documentation where what documentation do we do we need for this i mean i have a list in my mind but 
the documentation is is something that you need expert consulting on. You need the, the supply agreements. And in supply agreements, there's a number of elements that we need to uh, tackle and make sure that suppliers are delivering on uh, the continuity factors. So there's a whole yeah. bunch that goes into documentation. And look, that's a problem. What a lot of guys do is they find this product. The guy says, yes, I'll sell you the product. No mm. problems. Mm -hmm. So they say, fantastic. So they go out there and they sell a shed load of product. The manufacturer sees that this product's got massive uptake. And so they get approached by one of the major retailers and they say, well, no problems. Mm. I'll see. How many do you want? <laughs> they tell you, listen, go away. I've got pick and pay. And they'll mm -hmm. pour their product into pick and pay. And they, sh they literally sink your ship. Mm. So it's very important before you kick off that you have um, supplier agreements. And what you want with your supplier is an agreement that has a couple of things, key things. One, you want continuity of supply. In other words, he cannot tell you that he can't supply you anymore. Mm. Two, you want continuity of price. He cannot just jack the price up on you willy-nilly. You want to make sure that he can scale. So if you're doing 100,000, 200, 500,000 units that he can actually or she can actually meet that demand. So that's critically important. Mm. And then you want continuity of quality. You don't want this guy changing the quality of the product so sure. that he can maximize or she can yes. maximize her income. Mm. So you want to make sure you've got co continuity um, of quality. So those are key issues. And then the last thing you want to make sure that there is a penalty derived from late delivery because the guy can say yes i can supply you that put in the order pay me and then it can take six months to deliver it mm. so you need to have timelines in place in your in your agreements to ensure that if you order it today you can you have predictable timelines when you know that product is going to be on your shelf because mm. otherwise you can't plan sure so if this person commits to you to a four-week delivery time or two-week delivery time or six-week delivery time that allows you to plan your cash flow yeah. but if you don't have that in, in place and it happened to us you know, twice yeah you know you would think i would learn the first time around. <laughs> no i needed two lessons on that <laughs> yes but and you know now we make sure our clients have good su supplier agreements in place yeah. but you've got to put that in play if you want to su uh, succeed yeah um, the second thing, of course, is that you need agreements with your members. Mm. Just, just sorry, just before we go into that, I think the the you know, the continuity or the agreement that you have with su your supplier on um, timelines is one thing, but the agreement you have with the supplier on volumes, projected volumes. Now, with within this industry, you don't know if by the fifth month you're going to get ten thousand people or by the end of the first year, it's still that 10,000 people, or you got 80,000 people. Or 100,000 or 200. It's very hard to, to forecast what size of your network, what the size of your network is gonna be. Here in South Africa, we look at an average of- 30,000 members. 30,000 members, it's all spending. What is the about average? About 500 Rand. It's about 500 Rand, okay? Yeah. So, so, which is about $35. Um, you don't know how to, project this so when you speak to supplier the discussion with the supplier and the confirmation that you need to get is if we achieve certain milestones will you be able to fulfill on timeline and volume and quality and and quality or the continuity factors yes yeah. but we need to know that that product will be delivered when we hit you know we hit the exponential exactly, the scale. at those points absolutely 100 mm. percent which 100%. is difficult because you can go to supplier you you hold by your supplier because you know they're the one giving you the product but you are so much yes okay it's getting me worked up because it's <laughs> <laughs> and, and the this thing happens. is that, and on top of it when your supplier sees you going well you need to make sure you've tied them down to some form of restraint of trade that they can't take the products they're making for you and sell them in uh, competition with you and pick and pay because hmm. what these suppliers do is they take your product they reformulate it slightly they slap a slightly different label on and they stick it into to the retail stores yeah and they're trying to double dip on, on your product. Sure. And so you've got to have that part of your co contract. So, look, I would get a lawyer in, involved in mm. that. I mean, we're not lawyers, but I would have a lawyer because that's a key part of your, uh, your, um, your documentation. documentation. But then there's the documentation. And that's one part. Yeah, documentation with your network. Yeah. What happens if the guy dies? Yeah. What happens to his income stream? Can his family inherit it or not? What happens if a husband and a wife are together and they get divorced? Who gets the network? Mm. What happens if somebody in the network wants to buy somebody else in the network's 
position? How do you deal with it? Now, there's a thousand of those what ifs that have to be in your supply agreement. Otherwise, your heavy hitters, the guys who are earning big money, will just pull the carpet out from under you. And if you do anything they don't like, they will sue you to pieces. So you've got to have a proper dealer agreement in place mm. to ensure that that agent, that IBO, that member of your network knows mm. where the line is. Mm. And then, of course, there's all the other documents. Yeah. You use a manual explaining the comp plan. The comp plan documents, yeah. which are the detailed documents around the comp plan. Yeah. There's just a pile of documentation. Yeah, there's the website privacy policy documents. Yeah, the terms there's, and conditions on the website. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a full list. Now, the benefit with, with us at NetReady and, and moving to Dream Team is that we have all those documents as templates. Now, when people come on board with, with NetReady, we provide those as resources. However, mm. we still urge that our clients take those resources, get the lawyer to check it over, just just do a glance over to make sure that everything is um, is in accordance yeah. to, to the yeah. law. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, 100%. Um, okay, that's documentation. Documentation, that's a, that's a massive pain point. Yeah. And as a new business owner, you, to start a new business is really difficult if you don't know what those those pain points are. And exactly. What documentation you need. Mm. Let's, let's feed into support. Now, support in... Um, MLM is is huge okay and I'm talking about the support team sitting behind the systems answering queries on products answering queries on um, orders my, that my order wasn't delivered um, network questions all of those there's there's a huge complex compensation on plan looks like it's wrong yeah commissions weren't paid out correctly there's yeah. so many things I there. didn't receive my commissions what's going on all yeah. of those yeah. you're highlighting the big ones yeah but yeah. there are so many underlying ones as well so let's let's talk about the infrastructure that's needed for support i think we actually went into this in a previous episode one or two back but let's look at that support well, obviously you need your support team so you need desks you need um computers yeah. you need staff you need internet connections you need a place for them to sit and, and the challenge is there, you're looking on average, the cost of a support seat is somewhere between 15 and 25,000 Rand. I don't know what that is in dollars, mm. but it will be probably substantially more because if you're in the US or in your UK paying, paying in pounds, your staff component is much higher mm. than, than here in, uh, in South Africa. So, but in South Africa, let's say between 15 and 20,000 Rand per staff mm. member. About thousand dollars. Then they've got to manage it. Mm. You've got to manage that staff member. You've got to make sure they come in on time, that they answer the tickets quick, correctly, that they're fully trained on all of the aspects of the business that they've got to um, uh, relate to. And then as your business scales, you've got to scale that support team. So if you've got 80,000 people, you've probably got 20 or 30 support staff who are answering tickets for those people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a huge, a huge thing. You know, so, so support's a massive, massive, massive part of your business. Mm. As a matter of fact, there's companies that all they do is support. Yeah. That's a full-time business. Yes. So remember, we're putting eight hours a day into the running the business. <laughs> we're putting another eight hours into to the network. network. We're putting eight hours into the warehouse. We're going to put another eight hours into support. Excellent. How do we duplicate <laughs> ourselves and then again and again? Well, that's obviously where money comes in. If you've got yes. the cash flow, you can employ people. But mm -hmm. when you're starting out, you've got to be all of these things because mm. you don't have probably small startup businesses don't have the cash flow to put a, a support team together to get the warehousing. You know, it's all about it's money and time. That's mm. it. You've mm. either got the time, no money, money, no time. Mm. If you've got the money, you employ the people. If you've got the time, you do it yourself. Sure. Uh, now, the support team, which leads us into the next point, is they need a worker for system. They need to work with a system that's tracking all incoming queries and all um, outgoing replies. How is that done? That's done through a customer relations management tool that has to be built into a centralized system. Well, it doesn't have to be built into a centralized system. So okay. you can use something like Zendesk. So you could set up Zendesk sure. and you could get Zendesk working and you can have your customer relations management happening through there. The bottom line, though, is you need a system. Mm. You need to be able to track the incoming communication conversations you need to make sure what's happening in those conversations somebody needs to be overseeing that those conversations are happening correctly that mm -hmm. you're not irritating your network yes etc so there are definitely systems involved that you need to set up and so you need to become a systems expert as well mm. yeah. when i mention systems 
what I mentioned is in a centralized system is that yes, you have Zendesk, but you need to know where that customer or that network member is within their journey in your business. Oh. You need to leverage that, that and this, I'm, I'm getting yeah. into what the NetReady system actually does. If it's NetReady or another centralized system that has the CRM functionality built in with all the other plugins to fully understand where this customer is, why... Yeah, look, I think that, first of all, I don't want to make this a pitch session for NetReady. Sure. So, I mean, it's that's not. whether you use NetReady or not, immaterial. Mm. Okay, this is about what makes this industry really difficult. Mm. And your IT is a big part of what happens here. Mm. Because you have to set up whatever systems you're using. You have to implement on those systems. You have to be able to manage and maintain those systems. You have to understand those systems in depth. And then you've got to utilize those systems in the best possible way mm. to get the outcomes you're looking for. So the IT side of your business needs full time focus. So there's another eight hours of your day need to go into the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. So, so the bottom line is that, that IT and systems um, processes are key, 100% key to running a big business like this. Mm. And understand these are big businesses. Within 11 months, you can quite easily be at a, a two three million dollar a month business mm. now three million is mm. that right yep. about three million dollars a month yes. it's like 36 million dollars a year yes but that's not a small business that's substantial mm. you hit three million dollars a month you're running a large business there mm. and these businesses can scale really really quickly sure so you know, obviously, if we go back to the eight hours times, however mm. many we've done there, <laughs> you know, your systems on those businesses have to be managed properly. They have to be looked after. You need to know what's going on in them. And as I say, that's a full-time job all on its own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We mentioned, I touched on uh, on commissions and paid out to the network. Now, the way that's done is through compensation plan. Now, the compensation plan is another big pain point, you know. There's a lot of the clients, my clients, come to me and they say, Stu, well, I've, I've seen another company uh, that is using this comp plan and they're shooting the lights off. They're doing such a great job. I want that comp plan. Or I want elements of this comp plan, that comp plan, and they sort of fix everything together and do this for me. Now, what are the issues there? Well, look, first of all, you need to get a professional to, to comp, you know, your, the most money you will, you will spend. If mm. you're doing, let's say if you're doing $2 million a month in turnover, mm. chances are you're paying out $1 million in commission. Yes. Now, that's a $12 million a year decision you're making. So you better get somebody professional and competent to design your comp plan. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when you come with somebody else's comp plan, you don't know whether that comp plan is working for them or not. Also, you think that businesses are successful because of the compensation plan they're not mm. it's incentives it's recognitions it's social it's product mm. it's a five the compensation drivers. plan is just 20 percent of what drives the business yeah so even if you have the best compensation plan in the world it's only 20 percent of your business so the issue is that what you don't want those you don't want a compensation plan you think is good drives all the wrong behaviors mm -hmm. and that needs to be designed and that's a huge pain point mm. and people they think they understand it but when we actually start digging into the what ifs with the product, with, with the compensation plan, we very quickly see that these guys have no clue, zero idea of what the ramifications of the compensation plan they're putting together are, yeah. what behavior drives. They don't understand it. Yeah. And then we, when we dig in, the company they copied isn't sharing all the nuances. Mm. They're not trying to educate the person down to the nth degree on the nuances of the comp plan. Mm. They're just trying to show them how incredible the compensation exactly. plan is. So they're doing a 30,000 foot fly, fly mm. by. Mm. The guy's thinking, wow, best compensation plan in the world. Meanwhile, the company's thinking, oh, why did we ever choose this compensation right. plan? It's horrible. Yes. Driving all the wrong behaviors. But they're locked into it. Yeah. So they're out there touting the comp plan that's how you earn money telling everybody how much money they can make and then you go and copy it and of course <laughs> so there's a whole story around compensation plan having a professional to design that comp plan and coming up with a proper compensation plan yes and and that's a pain point you need to do it and it's expensive of course it can cost you twenty thirty thousand dollars to have a mm. proper comp plan designed mm. and well then you have to write it into this whatever system you choose yes, to use yeah, yeah. and that needs to be able to calculate it correctly so that your people are paid out in the right manner exactly right yeah so there's a, 
there's a lot that's going to go into that. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We're dancing on all the different uh, pain points here, and we can go into so much detail on each one. But I think it's good to just highlight these. Yeah, yeah. I think what we're doing here is is the right way to do it. Absolutely. Let's go into the the, finan the financial side of the business and just the paying out the commissions and who you need to have in place, the staff um, um, function that you need to have available. All of those things. That's that's a pain point in itself. Well, you need to have somebody who's, who's focused on nothing else. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, especially once you start getting traction, people are putting money into your bank account, they're paying with credit cards, they're paying with debit cards. Uh, um, APIs can go pear-shaped from time to time and you don't get the payment registered in the system. And so the whole idea is somebody's got to be watching to see, A, that the money's coming in. And guys do crazy things. <laughs> I mean, when we were running Acorn Kids, people put money into our, 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 our account and they would do a direct deposit and the reference in this was payment for my order brilliant outstanding <laughs> now we've got twenty thousand orders in the system for the month and this is payment for my order we don't know who she is or he is we don't know what she or he has done what they bought we've just got some arbitrary amount and sometimes the amount they put in is not even the same amount that's on the invoice and so you need somebody here no you have no idea payment for my order <laughs> you need somebody who's full-time focused on that because once the money's in commissions need to be calculated normally your systems are the commission calculations are systemized and then at the end of the month you've got to audit it because you've got to make sure you don't pay out twice as much as you mm. should yes so you audit the commissions make sure you do a sanity check mm -hmm. is this right yes it's right fantastic pay out the commissions then that process has got to be managed Either you're uploading a file mm. or you're loading the payments into whatever mag tape systems you're using. Yeah. That's showing my age. <laughs> or however you're doing it, out goes the commissions. And that whole process needs to be managed. Because remember, you're doing $2 million. You're spending a million dollars. That's big, real money that's going mm. out the door every month. You double that payment. You've got no money in the business. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good point. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that that's a, that's a serious pain point, and it needs to be everything from your compensation plan to all the finances right the way through to getting your money, making sure it's in there. Mm. And then you've got people def trying to defraud you. Mm. The guy will send you proof of payment, and if you act on that proof of payment, yeah, it's in an, an SMS. Well, or it's text not on. necessarily an SMS. They actually defraud you by making the uh, a payment yes. ticket in a oh, computer look, payment, yeah. look different. You know, they add a note onto the, they, they put in $3 and they add two notes on it and make it look like they put in $300. You know, so people are actually out there trying to mm. scam you and you've got to be on top of it. Well, you've got a network of 100,000 members plus their customers. Yeah. There's, there's bound to be people in there that are chance takers. Exactly. Uh, the, the the systems that you mentioned, uh, you know, in addition to running all of this, this needs to be run off a centralized system. And we've got there's companies like Inside Africa, there's Xerox, there's Sage. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of different accounting management packages that you'd use. Do you suggest these companies using this? No, look, I think that I think you need a system that is specially geared for multi-level marketing. Mm. Um, so that I think is what you need. You need mm -hmm. a system that is actually geared for doing MLM um, and for calculating commissions and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would definitely have a proper system that, that is running that. And that goes back to the point we're talking about of the IT. You, yes. know, you need a proper system. It needs to be properly managed. Your IT is a big part of your business. Okay. Yeah. So this is training your people on those there's, there's, uh, nuances and those specific elements that they need to focus on and which do not pay out too much commissions and identify potential fraud but also your people teaching the people that you, you can't just say paying for my order uh, yeah thanks. so that so brings in training of in course. training yeah. exactly and training is a huge aspect of this business well it's full-time job so remember those eight hours we we're talking about yes eight well, times five hours, hours now <laughs> we're now eight on six hours yeah, so so well, Training is a massive, massive part of the business because you've got to train the people on your product. You've got to train the people on, on how to do their, use the system. Mm. You've got to train them on things like how to make payment and what to do, mm. how to use their e-commerce platforms and their replicated website, how to market on social mm. media and use the, the material that the company's giving them, mm. how, to, how, to, how the comp plan works, how mm. to find prospects, how to get the prospects to sit down and listen to them. 
how to all, close those prospects. Exactly. So that's all training. That's a full-time job, another eight hours. And that's a huge pain point because what our clients are doing is they so they drowning in business work. I call it busy work. Mm. <laughs> and they aren't out there able to do productive work because literally the lights have got to stay on. Somebody's got to switch them on. The accounting's got to be done. Somebody's got to do it. And if you're a one-man band, that puts a massive amount of pressure onto you mm. because how do you deal with all of those things? You know? And, and then, and it just brings me back to what I was saying before. If you are working on all of these things that we've just talked about, how do you have time to grow the, business, the network? Mm. Mm. And so it's one of the reasons, I mean, we have clients who come to us who just never, ever get off the ground. Mm. What is the reason? The reason is they don't have time to go and do the most important thing, which is building the network. And they can't build the network if they don't have all of this infrastructure in place, mm. because how do they fulfill on the promise? So it's it's massive. Yeah. Well, how do they go and do it? Well, they, they employ the right person, people, person in this case, to build the network, drive the network. And we call this person a network jockey. Yes. That person, sole focus, just like the accountants, their sole focus is to build and motivate and drive mm. this network. Now, what some of our small companies do, which is a massive mistake, is they give the jockey the mm. top of the network. Mm. Mm. And so that's a complete disaster because that is the most expensive person you ever get in your whole life because that guy's there forever. Mm. And so once that business is going and you've got like leadership in place, suddenly that jockey, all he's doing is he's reaping masses of money off you without having to do anything. Once the business is up and running, he's just taking cash. Yeah. Now, that's a complete disaster. And it's, it's easy when you've got no money to think, ah, oh, yeah, look, I would be happy to give him whatever to get this going. Mm. But two, three, five, ten years down the road, when you're paying millions of dollars a month to this person who's doing nothing, you realize that this was a massive mistake that you made. So your jockey should never be part of the network and should always, 100% always, just be a paid mm. um, a member of your staff, an yes. employee. Yes. End of story. No hybrid model, no Nothing. sit in the network. And no. no. You should never do that, ever. Agreed. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just... What benefit do you get from that? Mm. So if you can't afford to hire somebody, you need to be that person. Mm. So that's a key person. It's, it's the most expensive person. It's the most important person in the network. And you need to be that person. Or you need to find somebody you can hire mm. who can be that person. The, the issue with it, and, and I, I say it's an issue because a lot of the clients come to me about this, this point specifically, is that they go, well, how do I actually incentivize the jockey to drive the network and truly have a vested interest in the business. And that's why they go into the discussion of, should I put them in the network somewhere? Yeah. And, and you don't want that. Yeah. If they're in the network, then they're interested in their own business. They're not helping people who are not no. in the network. That's a big so issue. So you just pay them. They run the network for you. They do the training. They do the thing. And then you're paying them. You have leverage. Mm. You can say to them, listen, you need to do training tonight. You need to do this. You need to do that. You can give them a list of things to do and they can be focused on doing them. Mm. It's like your accountant. You don't wonder, is your accountant going to do a good job? Mm. You don't say to them, listen, I'll give you half the company if you do the accounting. You know, you wouldn't dream of doing <laughs> for it. For sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. your receptionist. Oh, don't worry. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you three quarters of the company. You come be my receptionist. No. Yeah. And the same thing with the network marketing. The most important part of the business, you don't want somebody to own that. And then they get disenchanted with you. They own the whole network. They push off to another company. They take your whole network with them. Business done. End of business. Mm. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely a pain point. Mm. Being the top of your network and training your people and teaching your people and motivating them. Huge pain point. But you have to have the right people at the top there mm. who you're paying or mm. you have to be that person. Mm. Agreed. We've touched on two of the five uh, primary drivers of the network, which is the product we spoke about in the beginning. Then we spoke about the compensation plan. Let's go into that of incentives and what we need to have in place. Yeah. There's a, lot, a whole bunch of pain points here. Well, it's just, I mean, <laughs> you've got to run the events. You've got to set up the event. You've got to make sure that the event is properly managed. You've got to make sure that you're live streaming the event. You've got to make sure that the people arrive and somebody greets them. Mm. You've got to have your entire pitches from the, the front of the stage. So when you are doing, are we talking incentives or recognitions? Incentives. incentives. But we have it's the same thing with recognition. Exactly. 
they so, play well. Yeah, all of that stuff has got to happen and somebody's got to manage that. Mm -hmm. On top of it, you've got to have strategies in place that automatically recognize and incentivize people. You've got to have processes that allow your network, you've got to train your network, the leadership, how to recognize and incentivize their people mm. and how to utilize the company's incentives to drive their people. Mm. So there's a massive amount of work Mm. around incentives and recognitions i kind of tend to group them together mm. yes the Agreed. difference though incentive costs you money recognition is free yes if you pay for recognition it's not recognition mm -hmm. it's an incentive mm. that's, that's it. a great point so incentives cost you money we're sending you to mauritius if you win the strip recognition man you're awesome mm. and there's strategies around all of that so you've got to come up with the strategies and then you've got to execute on that and that's a full-time job yeah. How many eight hours have we got now? <laughs> We're on seven eight hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The strategy that needs to adopt it needs to be so carefully thought through because we what what are we trying to do? Just like the compensation plan, we're trying to drive the right behavior within the network. And through incentives, we're still driving behavior, and then we're recognizing through recognition that behavior that's been achieved. Yes. But there's timelines for incentives there's um, uh, mechanisms like leaderboards to see where you where you rank yes, uh, throughout exactly. the period of the competition no, back, back to your it's, yeah. it's, they're, they're, it's so complex and intricate exactly. just these two points and that that needs eight hours of management and they are 40 percent of your business 40 percent of your success is dependent on recognition and incentive 40 percent mm. Now so bring that back. That's four in every ten people are driven by the recognition and incentives. That's crazy, hey? That's wild. Yeah. So that brings us into the fifth and final driver, which is social. Well, we talked about that earlier on we, in the we, session. Oh, we did. Yes, you're yes. right. So social is obviously a big thing. Yeah. That's a you know you need people full time involved in your social mm. um, strategies. Definitely. If I can just touch on it, that social extends into different two different parts. There's a social responsibility. Part, I want to be involved in this company because they're doing good in these in this this and that manner but this is this is a complete uh, belly to belly peer to peer engagement social I want I want to connect with Richard I want Richard to be my friend exactly. I want these people to be my friend and that's how people get involved they right, want to exactly. be on a whatsapp group they want to be uh, within a forum they mm -hmm. want to be in all these different areas that connect them with other people because their driver is is that human connection exactly and that's why your most successful people in multi-level marketing are women mm -hmm. couples mm -hmm. and teachers mm -hmm. the least successful people in multi-level marketing salespeople. wow there you go because this is not a business of selling this is a business of connecting yeah this is a business of social interaction and what does a salesperson do mm. they tell you about the product they close you they move on yeah a teacher mm. spends time getting to know you and helps nurture you. So teachers and trainers, mm. couples nurses, and women, yes. yeah, nurses, all of those kind of people type people are successful in this business. Okay. So so we've got all of our drivers done. We've got business setup done. We are now becoming a successful business within this space. Now we hit what we call the golden cycle. Okay. We've ramped up our business and at the golden cycle, there are so many different points in which we need to bring all of those elements together in one. Yeah. And so normally you're running three, three times a year, you're giving the business a push with the golden cycle. So what you're doing there is you're having these big events mm. and there's a strategy around those as well. But you bring people into the event, you wind them, you dine them, they pay to be there because mm -hmm. you've got to cover your costs on that. And then what happens in that space is you have a situation where you recognize them, incentivize them, launch new products, build on your social um, interaction. And the whole concept of this thing mm. is to build momentum in the business so that you grow the business. And, and the key thing around this is, is to prevent churn because a pain point in our business is churn. Mm. Person joins, not looked after properly, they leave. Mm. That's called churn. Mm -hmm. Now, the golden cycle, that whole strategy is there to mitigate to, yeah to prevent churn mm. or to limit churn to limit, as much yeah. as possible but that is an entire strategy mm. and that's an entire you actually need people to be involved in that whole strategy but it falls into what we've set up until yes. now because we, we've talked about incentives and social it's, it's the same thing mm. but it's just strategically um, um, 
executed, mm. so, so to say. So it's more about execution than it is really about a pain point. Mm. The pain point is organizing the event. Yes. The execution <laughs> of that is, okay, what do we say at, at, at this event? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've now scaled our business up and we are doing volumes that we only dreamed of. Our suppliers are going, wow, they said they would do this. I didn't believe them, but now they're achieving this. Do we have the cash flow available to bring in the products, manufacture products and produce them, have them on the shelves ready available to supply that demand that's come in? Very, very big pain points. And it's something that we're very close to. Well, we've seen a couple of our clients um, we can uh, trade themselves bankrupt, mm. if I can put it that way. We've a couple of our clients have have ramped their business up and actually not been able to sustain the growth because they can't access the, uh, um, bridging capital. Mm. And you can't access bridging capital when you need it. Mm. You have to access ca bridging capital before you need it. So yeah. you have to have people in place where you say to them, "Look, in four months' time, if I do this." Will you be able to provide me with the bridging capital mm -hmm. to take it past? Now, the problem is the institutions, they don't like it. Mm. They want to see 12, 24, 36 months of track record sure. before they'll be prepared to give you bridging capital. So you need to, to find or access venture capitalists or um, angels mm. or entities that are more interested in investing in companies than they are in investing in. Mm. They're not just trying to get give you money at an interest rate with collateral they they're looking to actually now they're going to be expensive sure but a, a venture capitalist said to me the other day how much would you be prepared to give up to make sure your business doesn't go bankrupt yeah and of course you know <laughs> yeah. that's the one area where you could you've got no option so one of our clients they ramped up very quickly and they got to a point where the order that they needed to place with their supplier was so high that the supplier got scared because the supplier up until then had getting them to pay 30 or 60 days. Mm. Now they came to him with a massive order and said, look, this is where we are. This is what we're going to need over the next two months. And can you please provide us with this product? Can you? And the guy said, look, this is too rich for me. I'm only going to do it if you give me the cash up front. Mm. If you give me the cash up front, I'll, I'll do this for you. Mm. But I'm not putting it myself at risk for all of these millions of dollars Yeah. Um, on the off chance that you'll actually sell it and pay me. And of course, the guys, because they were growing so fast, they didn't have the cash flow to pay this guy. And mm. he said, well, sorry. Yeah. Scary. Then they're scrambling to try and get financing. And in the meantime, they don't have stock on the floor. Mm. And within a couple of weeks, the network is so disenchanted, they start like scuttling off the boat, mm. like rats from a sinking ship. And that's it. The whole business just tanked. Not because they weren't successful, but because they were successful. Mm. Now, this is a massive pain, pain point, being able to access real capital when you need it. That bridging finance to take you through. Because look, our business is an S-curve. You have a linear point where you're busy doing your launch strategies, etc. Mm. At some point, you hit critical mass and the business goes vertical. Mm -hmm. And there you're signing up, you're doubling up, you're getting mm. that exponential, let's go buy a Porsche calculation. Yeah. At some point, the, the business tops out. Mm. It cannot go forever. It's mathematically impossible. So you get the top of the S-curve. Now you have a stable, stable business. It's either flat or it's growing in a linear fashion. Mm -hmm. Very manageable. Mm -hmm. This bottom section, very manageable. Yes. This vertical yes. section, problematic. Yeah. And this is where you need the bridging capital. And generally, this happens for 12 to 18 months. And then it tops out. Yeah. So you need to be able to access capital to see you through that 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have the capital, it's difficult to do it. I've done it out of cash flow. Mm. But literally, you cannot spend on anything. Sure. You cannot go out and buy a Porsche. Mm. You've got to keep every single cent. Now, your problem comes in if you're importing or if you've got long lead times. So now you've got a situation where you're importing. Let's say you're bringing a product in bulk from China. Mm. You need to have at least four to five months of product, maybe even six months of product in the system at any one time. So let's say you're doing a million dollars of sales a month and let's say you're growing at 20%. Yeah. 
So you're 1.2 million, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. So by the time you're six months down the road, six months with the stock, you calculate that over the six month period, you need 10 or $12 million worth of stock. Now, a million dollars is on your floor. A million dollars is being brought into the ports, mm. maybe, or $2 million, maybe two or $3 million is on the water. Mm. And maybe there's a two or $3 million order that's being processed mm. right now. Because you've got to keep on ordering all the time. You've got to make sure that you're forward ordering all the time. Mm. Okay? So now you're tying $10 million up in in capital. But your business is, let's say, only generating 100% profit. So on the million dollars, you can generate $2 million. Mm. Where do you find the other $8 million from? Yeah. And so that's where you need the bridging finance. Once the business hits the top of the S-curve, then... You're selling $10 million this month, and you know that there's $10 million coming in next month. So you know that, and, and it's not growing anymore because it's the growth that kills you. Mm. So that for me is, as I said, we've seen several clients who've tanked because they just can't access the finance when the business goes vertical. Mm. And it's key to not leave it too late. When you need it is, is, is when the business is going to yes. shut down. Yes. So speaking to the right people, getting in place, this, these are projected numbers. If we get there, will you be in my corner to support me with the capital to maintain the continuity of the yes, business? Exactly. Get me to the stabilizing point. Exactly right. Yeah. So those are, I mean, there's more pain points than what we've talked about here. Mm. But those are the pain points that go into running a business. And it's one of the reasons why the small guys really struggle to succeed in the space. Yeah. Um, it's one of the reasons why... The big guys can make it happen. A guy who's got deep pockets and long arms can come in and make it happen. Mm. But the little guys really, really struggle to get their businesses going and to make it happen. Because how do they access capital? Mm. They don't have the, the track record. They don't have the, the, the maybe the business acronym or any of the things that go in. They've got a great product and they know how to build a network. But everything in between is, is a vacuum. Even big companies who recognize the the scope of these businesses mm. kind of say, whoa, yeah. you know, this is actually, this is serious business, mm. serious business, mm. not just a business, business and a network. Sure. It's like running two businesses. Yeah. And then it's not just two businesses because you've got warehousing and, and e-commerce fulfillment. You've got training, you've got motivation, you've got video production, you've got all sorts of stuff that's yeah. happening. So, I mean, it's just, it's the scope of this. And I, you said we don't want to scare people, and mm. we don't. Mm. Um, but understanding the scope of what you're getting yourself into is key to be able to mitigate those risks and to be able to plan for what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. There's always a solution to a pain point, but that's built on understanding what the road ahead has and then building strategies to make sure that you mitigate all that risk. Yeah. Boom. That's it. So what I would like to come into, and, and, and this is not a pitch session for NetReady at all. Mm. Um, you know, as you know, this content is free. Yes. Anybody from anywhere in the world can tap into this and watch it and go out and make magic out there. Mm. And we, we're really happy. Anybody who succeeds in this space, I believe, is helping humanity. And mm. one of the reasons I got into this business right in the first place was to try and help put food in people's tables and a roof over their head. Mm. And if I'm doing it, Fantastic. But if somebody else uses this content to do it, 100% happy. I'm excited that they are doing it and helping people change their mm-hmm. world. So yes. this is free content. But what I'd like to just say is that at this point, I just want to pitch what we're doing at NetReady so that mm-hmm. people out there, guys that are actually looking at this and saying, whoa, that's overwhelming to me, can say, okay, there is actually an answer. Mm. Um, so what we've done at NetReady is created this concept called the dream team. And we are the dream team. Mm. Da, da, da. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so so what, we, what we're saying to our clients, look, you guys know how to build a team and you know how to you know, a great product. find a product or you've got a great product. Mm. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide everything else. So we will do the financing for you. We'll make sure we collect the money, that we pay the commissions, that we track the cash. We'll do all of that. We'll provide you with full warehousing and fulfillment. You push your product into our warehouses. We'll pick it, we'll pack it, we'll ship it for you. So we'll make sure that we count the stock, we keep track of the stock, that we have the staff. We'll provide you with a support team. 
So we will have a full-time support team that will actually answer the questions. Where's your product? I don't understand my compensation plan, etc. Mm -hmm. We put together the training with you. It's in conjunction with you, but we do a large portion of it mm. for you mm. so that you can actually just uh, um, go and deploy the training and use the training. We teach you how to run your network and how to keep your network motivated. We handle the incentives, not only that, we actually pay for the incentives. Mm. We handle the recognition for you, so we make sure that the recognition happens and that it's that it's exciting and, mm. and that your people are, we show you how to drive your people with the recognition. Um, what am I missing here? The system. Oh, we set up and, and manage the whole IT solution for mm. you, from the warehouse management systems right the way through to the multi-level marketing all of the IT solutions we handle for you completely. Mm -hmm. And then we've got in-house um, venture capitalists mm. who, if your business grows, they understand our model. Mm. They're excited about our yes. model. And if your business is growing, obviously they're not interested if you haven't started growing. If you've got a great idea, they don't care about that. Mm. But if your business is getting traction and you need bridging finance to get you through that growth, we have internal venture capitalists, VCs, who understand our business and who've got the cash flow to come into your business and say, okay, we will fund the growth over the next 18 months until you get to the top of the S-curve. Mm. Obviously, they don't, don't do it for free. Mm -hmm. you know, sure. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a price to be paid, but the price of not doing it is going bankrupt. Of course. So what we've tried to do with the Dream Team project is to say, look, there's all of these pain points and the reason you're failing is because you can't address all of these pain points. We already have big teams. We have teams who will run the warehouse. We have teams who do the financing. We have teams who do the support. We have teams who, who we've got professionals who set up and run events. Mm. We've got a proper full-on video production facility. This entire place is obviously available to do uh, training and video shoots and, and get the stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And we understand this business. We mm developed compensation plans so we understand what a good compensation plan looks like so with the dream team project what you do is you come and you connect with us we obviously have to look that you have the product and you can provide the product mm -hmm. quality price yeah. and supply supply scale mm -hmm. and that we're not going to be competing against that product mm. in pick and pay so that's got to be in place yep You've got to prove that to us. You've got to have the right con documentation in place. And then if we decide that you're the kind of partner that we, we want to help, we call them brand partners, we will then pull you into the Dream Team project and then help you kind of get your business up and running. Because mm. if we can do all of that for you, take all of that weight off your back mm. and provide you with a, a, a channel to just go and put your efforts into the things that you do well. Product gets manufactured or imported, Mm. Go straight to our warehouse. You don't even see it. You don't have to worry about it. Off it goes. Mm. All you then focus on is to make sure that enough product is coming in and we'll tell you how much you need to order. You just make sure it's coming in and then you build your network. Sure. So those are the two areas you focus. Build and train your network and make sure the product's coming in. And that's what most of uh, our clients are very good at. The, the peripheral stuff, the stuff that makes us a pain point and makes it complex. Yeah the the word oblivious does come to mind but <laughs> <laughs> well they've never done it before have they because for most of them you don't know what you don't know until you don't know exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly right yeah. but i have amazing product and i have network connections i can drive that network let us sort the rest out with dream team yeah so and and the reason we've put this together is not because we want to run warehouses mm. or do financing or run a support no. team or do any of that stuff. I don't get up in the morning and say, yippee, I'm going to do this stuff. <laughs> yeah. The reason is that we've recognized that this industry is extremely difficult and it needs specialized skills and it needs a lot of money to set these companies up. And we're in a unique position, the absolutely unique position to provide all of that skill set for you as, a, as an entrepreneur. Take all of the load off your back and allow you to just go and focus on building a massive network. We handle everything else. Yeah. And so I think this is, a, I, I personally think it's an incredibly exciting project from our side. And, you know, if people out there 
want to just do their own thing, well, NetReady is still available. There's other systems out there that they can just go and buy and off they go. But we would like to give you, as an end user, we'd like to give you every possible chance of succeeding. Mm. And if we can take all the load off and all you've got to do is build a team, can you see how that just opens up the world for you? Oh. You don't worry about the product. You don't worry about anything. You just go and build your team. Mm. You can build, build 100,000 people and we will handle everything else. Some things we'll do with you. Mm. Obviously, some stuff you have to do yourself. We're not going to build your network for you. Sure. You know, then we may as well have our own network. Why would we bother? Yes. Um, so you've got to go and build your own network. But we handle, we take the pain out of it mm. so that you just run your business. Yeah. Okay. Which the stream team project is amazing. And again, it's not a pitch, it's just a solution to all the pain points that we just listed yeah. before. Thank you so much for your time. Hey. We're going to end this off here. How, how, how did we do? We how did, we did well. I think we went over an hour there. What? Yeah. Oh. I think we did. Every week I say, there's no <laughs> ways we've got enough to say. We're never going to be able to talk for an hour. And we, we get do. to the end of it and I think, well, I can spend another hour talking about <laughs> exactly. this quite easily. Yeah. I'm in a very fortunate position to be the one that receives all this advice, information and guidance from you with extensive experience and authority in this industry. But everyone else out there has the opportunity to take on Richard's um, all the information and the experience and the learnings that he's had over the past 35 years through these episodes that we're creating. And Richard, from our side, thank you very much. I, I, oh, it's I my pleasure. honestly appreciate all this information that's been parted onto the new generation of multi-level marketing. And for everyone else out there starting your business, uh, I hope this has helped you provide you with all the contents and the information to just understand the complexities around the industry and then the solutions that can guide you to building a successful business. Um, Please follow us on all of our platforms. We're on Facebook. We're also on LinkedIn. We've got our Spotify channel and we've got our YouTube channel, which is NetReady. Uh, please subscribe to this. We're building up big followers on this platform. Obviously, there's great content for business owners out there. And I just, want to, I just want to end off by saying, I don't know if I've got that camera on me. Yes, there it is. I see the light coming out. <laughs> if you enjoyed this content, please tell anybody who wants to listen to it, tell them about it. If you didn't enjoy the content, please keep it to yourself and don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay, so just, but spread the news because there really is, this is, this space we're in is amazing. I've never in my whole life of doing business seen anything like multi-level marketing. I've never seen businesses that can scale like this, that can get to the kind of turnovers that you can get to here. So this is something exceptional. And I know we, we scared the hell out of you with all of the pain points. I'm really sorry about that. But this is an exceptional industry. And believe me, if you do it right, it is honestly a license to print money. It's incredible. So thanks again also. Thank Stuart, you've been amazing. We, we keep on doing these things week after week and I mm. so love doing them with you. Mm. It's just absolutely exceptional. So thank you as well, man. So do I. Love it. Thanks, Richard. Thank you guys. Enjoy the week.